we all deserve to be free from the bondage of self-attack, self-judgment. We deserve to be free from the impermissible feelings of rage and terror. We deserve to feel supported and guided and fully loved. Forgiveness of ourselves and forgiveness of others is a direct path to that freedom. Welcome back to Dear Gabby. This is a awesome moment for me. I've missed you guys. We haven't recorded in a while. It's so unreal to see the show taking off the way it has. The mental health podcast on how to stop the stigma and shift the shame and really resolve our experience of trauma and really open up our hearts to what mental health really means to us and to be in the full expression of where we're at and what's up for us has been so heart opening for people. I really hope that you go back and listen to that episode. If you are a friend or a family member of, has ever struggled with PTSD or trauma or any feelings of shame around mental health, that episode will make you feel like you are not alone. People are also loving the episode on how to master the art of the law of attraction. I would not miss that one either. Listen, you can go binge all weekend on Dear Gabby's. You can return to them. They're going to keep coming at you. This is a movement. Let's begin this episode now pulling a card from the Spirit Junkie deck. That's the deck I pulled for you guys today. Let's pull a card from the Spirit Junkie deck, my friends. Here we go. What does the universe have in store for us today with the Spirit Junkie deck? What is our message for this show, our deck? I'm shuffling, I'm shuffling, I'm shuffling. It's my card deck with all of these affirmations from my life. Here we go. I'm mixing up the deck. Let's see what the universe has in store for us today. Ooh, here we go. This is a great theme for today. When I see good in others, I acknowledge it out loud. That's an easy theme for me here because all I want to see in each of you is the good in you. I want you to come here on this show and have the freedom to express the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want this to be a place where you can know that even in your darkest moments, there is grace. That even in your most uncomfortable situations, there is a divine opportunity for personal growth. That even in the people who have caused you the most harm, there is good. There is good in those souls. It's when we can see the good, even in those who have caused us the most harm, that we can truly understand the meaning of forgiveness. And forgiveness is the conduit for miracles. Forgiveness is the undoing of a fear-based belief system. Forgiveness is a reconnection to the truth of who we are. A lot of people on a spiritual path get really hung up about forgiveness. They start to feel like, how could I possibly forgive, or really not just people on a spiritual path, people in general could feel the feeling of how could I possibly forgive someone for this thing that they did to me or for this horrific event. I get it. I get it. I get it. But when we carry a resentment, they say in the 12 steps, it's like drinking poison or taking that bat and hitting yourself over the head with it. When we become willing to forgive, when we become willing to see the good in all, the God in all, that is when we begin to know the true meaning of forgiveness, the miracle of forgiveness, the freedom of release and surrender from the bondage and the burden of carrying a resentment, of bringing the past into the present and projecting it onto the future. Our ability to see the good, even in the people who have caused us the most harm, is our greatest superpower because it will ground us back into the truth of who we are, which is that same goodness, which is that God within us. This is clearly a topic I think that needed to come through today, forgiveness. 
The universe always hooks us up with what we need. I've got my deck right here. I'm going to put it down now. When I see the good in others, I acknowledge it out loud. Boom. There we go, my friends. Whew. All right, guys. Let's take this theme. Seeing the good in others, acknowledging it out loud, bringing forth a vibe of forgiveness into this theme for our show today. I think this will be a very powerful episode that has the transformational possibilities in front of us because it's a forgiveness is a spiritual topic I've been teaching for 15, 16 years now. And uh, I'm really psyched that it's coming up here on the show. So let's see what we get here now. Let's bring in our first guest. Let's see what comes through. Let's see what we get. And I'm ready for you guys. I'm ready. Bring them in. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Hi, babes. Wow. I literally just told my husband that there was no way that I was coming on today. And here I am. You're a super attractor. Wow. You're here. Wow. I, this is crazy. Um, okay. I am currently in school to become a breathwork facilitator. Oh, cool. How awesome. Yeah. Um, but I'm struggling with resistance of I'm not enough. And, um, my family's not fully behind this whole spiritual path that I'm on. They don't quite get it. Um, they're just not fully on board. And it actually, me and my mom got into a huge fight the other day and this card hits home and the whole forgiveness thing hits home because now I've realized that my mom and I's relationship is very broken mm -hmm. and there's lots of forgiveness there and there's lots of healing to do. And it's come up in my breathwork practices in this last week. So what are some tips on, cause she is, we live in the same town. She's very involved in my life, but I need to put up those boundaries and she doesn't respect them. So how do I stand strong in my boundaries with my mom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, love, here we go. There's a lot that you brought up here. Feelings of worthiness, forgiveness, and boundaries. I think that forgiveness as it's the theme that's been presented to us is going to be the segue into the resolution for all of it because you've ad you've admitted very openly now and you have a lot of self-awareness and spiritual background and, and clearly personal growth experience to have the awareness that your experience with your family, particularly your mother, has given you a belief system of who am I to do this and here it is again. Here it is again. How am I, who am I to do this? How can I possibly be on a spiritual path and be a spiritual teacher and be lead my breath work with this with this way that I want to move forward? So <clears throat> the practice of forgiveness is a radical experience because it helps us not only undo the burden of that inflicted belief system or pain or suffering from the past, but it also releases us of the attachment to the bond that is negative, right? To that that vibration. You're saying, I want to create boundaries. It, it, through, forgiveness literally is a massive invisible boundary because when we, we don't have energetic boundaries, when we're emotionally entangled in relationships. So we get we get cords that attach, right? We've talked about cord cutting here on the show before. Maybe we can do that now. We talk about cords getting attached with loved ones, particularly parents. I always say that your family members, particularly your parents, are the ones that can push your buttons most because they're the ones who put them there. And so we have this entanglement that starts to affect us as adults. And the stories from the past and the emotional connection and that sort of interwoven mending of relationship stuff carries into the present. So you have the awareness, you have the acknowledgement. There's a lot of pathways to cutting those cords and releasing those attachments that are negative and creating boundaries. And today we're going to hit it from the angle of forgiveness. So what I want to really emphasize is that your mother's need to control or your mother's need to make you be a certain way or inflict her ideas onto you 
are merely a reflection of her own wounds. So you're clean and sober five years and your mom still is trying to control the situation because she's got fear. She's got trauma around. I just want to keep coming back to your mom's experience because sometimes the quickest way into a, a, a heart opening experience of forgiveness is by recognizing the wound in the other. By seeing, think about you and your daughter, right? Imagine mm-hmm. witnessing your own daughter go through addiction and how scary that would be. And what do we do when we're scared? We try to control. And we use the, the, the forces of control to help ourselves feel safe. And you're her baby. And no matter what the past and the history might be, there's, you're always her baby. And there's this tremendous fear of what if that happens again? What if the spiritual path is going to open up some other door? Or who knows what her storyline is, but it's based on fear. And so I want you to do an exercise of seeing her for the first time. And this is a, 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 a chapter in my book, Judgment Detox. It's called See for the First Time. And it's a practice of seeing that person, and typically it's a parent, but seeing that person who is, you know, trying to control you or someone who's caused you harm. And, and I'd, like, I'd like to suggest that you do this with somebody that, you know, hasn't necessarily done something horrific, horrific to you because sometimes um, really scary stuff like, you know, like an abuser or something, it may be too soon to do that. But a parent that's like trying to control you or an ex-boyfriend, this is a great beginning step is to start to see her for the first time. And the practice is really creating a written list of all of the qualities in your mother that you admire, the qualities that you're grateful for, and maybe even start to go to the place of recognizing what are her wounds? You know, what are the things that are driving her to feel the need to control me? Because one of the fastest ways to forgiveness is to recognize the humanity and the good, which is what our card says. When I see good in others, I acknowledge it out loud. Acknowledging it to yourself is a massive step forward in your potential to forgive. What ultimately will happen is as you see her for the first time, as you see her humanness, as you see the God in her, as you see the love in her, as you see her in her light and in her motherhood and in her grace and in all that she has brought into your life, the good, you will begin to release her. As you release her, you become released. As you let go of that resentment, that attachment, that anger, that frustration, you dissolve the boundaries with love and you create a healthier baseline. This can all be done on the energetic plane, sweetheart. You don't have to do this. You you may be called. You might be spiritually called to speak up and say something to her, but it's not necessary. It can all happen on the energetic field. I'm going to send you a copy of my book, Judgment Detox. Okay. You're so cute. You're like, I want to watch the rest, but I can't wait to start my practice. It's great. You can do it while you can start your list and just keep that list going. And then when you meditate and you do your sound healing, do it with that list and just connect to that list and connect to that list and keep and keep adding to it and see for the first time. And I and, and I share a story in my about a parent a parent and my relationship in my book, Judgment Detox, about this beautiful experience of seeing my father for the first time and just seeing him with so much grace and all of the beauty and all of the magnificence of who he is and and that vision of him is such a beautiful vision for me and then what will happen is it doesn't mean that she first of all she will change when your energy changes it's just it's just the law but it won't matter that's the beautiful part you'll be so released and at ease that even when she acts out you'll see her through the lens of love because you've learned to see her for the first time okay Excellent, excellent, excellent. Beautiful, sweetheart. I love our theme for today, forgiveness, rock and roll. What a good theme for this show today. Here we go. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, love. Bye-bye. 
All right, who's next? Hey, man. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. How are you doing? Doing well. Really surprised to be here. You know, sometimes it's just meant to be your day here on Dear Gabby. This is your moment, baby. It's all about you. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so I'm doing well. Uh, recently, I've been working on trying not to uh, please people. I feel like that's held me back in a lot of ways, just caring too much about what other people think. And so uh, recently, I've just been really specifically working on that uh, and trying to just be free and just not really care what other people think or have to say about what I do. Okay. People pleasing. Yes. You want some help with that? You want some help with how to how to recover from that? I would love some help from that. That'd be great. Okay. So when you feel the need <clears throat> to people please do you know if there's like a common story that comes up for you like or a feeling or is there sort of a common theme when you get triggered to people please oh uh, there's a fear of not being accepted there you go i feel like i always have to go that extra step to make sure that they accept me and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. i feel like that kind of stems from childhood and a family thing and, of course uh, and so I turned to ad addiction for a while and I've been sober for a while. And so uh, I feel like, no, I feel like people pleasing was a main thing yep. that kept me, kept me down. And yep. uh, when I'm able to choose myself and put myself above, you know, as a first priority, I'm able to, I'm able to do so much, so much more with my life than I wasn't able to. Right. Well, uh, first of all, how long have you been sober? Uh, I've been sober for about two and a half years. Yes, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Uh, have you uh, been in a program or sober on your own? What have you been? How have you been going? Um, so I did AA for about 18 months. And uh, mm -hmm. and then I got real into a couple of your books. And uh, I did some Course in Miracles work and some, mm -hmm. uh, some Marianne Williamson. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I've been working on that lately. Uh, Great. Manifestation, just continuing to better understand myself. Beautiful. Okay. So I just want to identify something that's such a beautiful moment for you is the people, when we get clean and sober and we put down the drink and the drug or the original drug of choice, that was the big problem, right? All the other addictive patterns start to come up because we have to kind of, especially in early recovery, we look to other coping mechanisms to start to feel safe, right? Or feel good enough. And yeah. so this is, people pleasing is just another form of addiction. It's right. it's another form of trying to stay safe, trying to numb out a, 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 a fearful experience from the past of I'm not good enough. That's the same reason you used, right? You used right. because you didn't wanna feel the feeling of not being good enough and you wanted to get out of that feeling of fear. So the people pleasing, if it can be addressed as serious as an addiction, if it can be addressed and committed to as much as you have committed to sobriety, if it can be addressed and committed to as much as you committed to the 12 steps, and if you can even consider uh, working with a sponsor on this, by the way, you know, this is, there's a program for this. It's called Al-Anon because the Al-Anon program is for addicts and it's also for the loved ones of addicts because often what happens when we are an addict or we are in a relationship with an addict, there is a codependent entanglement of if I'm not serving, I'm not good enough. If I'm not saving everybody else, I'm not good enough. That I can imagine resonates with you, Wilson, yes? Yes, very much so. So my, my offering, like I can't be promoting the, this, the, the, the 12 step programs because it's just, it's part of the rules here, but I want to acknowledge that there are resources. So a great resource for you, and it could be a beautiful next step in your recovery journey, is to build in an Al-Anon program, to potentially work with an Al-Anon sponsor, to do the steps around the feeling and the need to save everybody else. It has the same root cause as the drugs and the alcohol. Mm -hmm. The root cause of I'm not good enough if I'm not saving everybody else. 
So there's a few things here. Number one, the same level of commitment that you've brought to your sobriety, I would recommend bringing here because this is still, a, this tackling this now, I'm very proud of you, by the way, this is early in your recovery to be touching on this stuff. Tackling this now, sweetheart, is uh, a huge step in strengthening your sobriety. In addition, it's another entry back into the steps because, you know, listen, I always say, those of us who have addiction and find our way to a program like that are so blessed because we can walk into any room in the world or go on a Zoom and anywhere in the world and listen to people who are like us. And it's a big reason why I created Dear Gabby is because not everybody has the privilege of entering into a 12-step meeting. I wanted to create a place here where we could just speak about the truth and, and, and hear truth and not feel alone in that truth. But you qualify, man. You qualify for these rooms. You qualify for these meetings. So so I'm just making a suggestion that they're there and there's another form of them, which is Al-Anon, which could be really transformational. Now, the same way with alcoholism and you getting sober, you've got your, you know, witnessing how you've been powerless over the substance and your life has become unmanageable. I can see that you already are aware of how you're, you're powerless over the people pleasing and your life is unmanageable with it. Yep, you know. Yeah, yeah I see you smiling. <laughs> and the, you know, the next step is just, you know, it, it, it's not even necessarily following, the, yes, I would say follow the 12 steps, but even just for here for today, your willingness is the door that's opening up that spiritual opportunity for you to grow. So I want to recommend that you continue to bring this back to your spiritual practice. And when you feel the need to overgive, for the fear of not being good enough. I want you to rely on your higher power of your own understanding to give you that love that you need to be reminded of. Even if you fake it till you make it. That will come through prayer, my love. The prayer is very simple. It can just be this. God, universe, whoever you talk to, i noticing that I want to people please right now because I'm not feeling good enough. Thank you for surrounding me with love and reminding me of my grace and helping me forgive my past so I can be at peace in the present. But even in your own words, right? Give it over, give it over. Because often when we're early in our recovery, we are looking outside of ourselves and, and, and late in our recovery too. You know, this is, I'm 16 years sober. It's still happening in my life at times. I hope you're enjoying this show. And if you want to get more Gabby, you can click the link below, subscribe to my Dear Gabby podcast on Apple. Be the first to know when the episodes drop because they come out one week before the video. And you can download it to your phone, listen to it while you're driving, while you're cooking, while you're working out. You can just get more Gabby wherever you are. And if you feel called, leave a review. I'd love to hear from you. Now let's get back to this episode. We are looking outside of ourselves for ways to feel good within. But with a spiritual foundation, we can turn to our higher power of our own understanding to give us that strength inside ourselves, to remind us of that strength. So if you say a prayer like that, you know, I'm noticing that, I'm, that this is up. Thank you for revealing the grace within me. Maybe an hour later, You'll be guided to a book that falls off the shelf and you open the book and that book reminds you exactly of how great, you know, your strength is and you start to feel good again. And then maybe a few hours later, you'll be, po fo you know, an opportunity to people please will show up and you'll just have the awareness and the willingness and the bravery to be like, you know, I'm going to be silent right now and just let this unfold. And I just want to emphasize that we underestimate the power of our prayer and the power of turning over our fears. When we have the bravery to say, take this from me, God, universe, spirit, grandma, whoever, take this from me, reorganize this, please, and give me the strength to show up new, miracles happen. I'm speaking to you specifically, Wilson, in this spiritual way, because you've already revealed to me that this is something you've gone deeper into, studying A Course in Miracles, reading my books. So that spiritual foundation of asking God or the universe or whatever you refer to it as 
to undo that old belief system and help you reclaim this new way of being. I want it to be a habit for you, baby. And I really want to bring it back right now to forgiveness because you said you wanted, you started studying the course. And A Course in Miracles, for anyone who's not familiar, is a metaphysical text based on the principle that through the experience of forgiveness, we can live a miracle. We can live a miraculous life because when we forgive, we undo the fears of the past so that we can become free in this present moment. And that is the miracle. And so what I want to emphasize for you today is that you have a miracle moment right now by really opening up through this experience as a way of forgiving those past moments so that you can be free in this present moment. And so through the power of your prayer of saying, you know, thank you for revealing to me the ways that I can do this. I've given you a thousand prayers now, so we're going to have to come back to this episode and listen to it. But thank you for, for helping me forgive my past so I can be free in this present moment. Being in the consistent prayer of the willingness and the bravery to let go of that fear-based belief system that has led you to addiction, led you to people pleasing, led you to destructive patterns and having the openness to be guided to do it differently, to live differently, so much will begin to unfold naturally for you. Sometimes we can do less and attract more through the power of prayer. And so I'm speaking to you spiritual student to spiritual student right now. Pray. Ground yourself in the desire to be released of this additional addiction, right? This, this other form of addiction. And give yourself, you know, somebody said something beautiful to me today, Wilson. I was getting a, a message from my friend who's a medium. And she was talking to me about another friend of mine that was struggling. And she was giving me some advice for her. And she said, you know, you have to remind her that she deserves to feel safe too. That she has guides too that she has her a God of her own understanding too. So I think that that came to me today to also come to you. You deserve to feel safe. Okay, sweetheart. God, you are so wonderful, my sweet. How old are you? 24. You got sober at 22. You guys make me so emotional, <laughs> make me cry. I just, I want to, I want you to look me in the eye right now. And I want you to hear me. You're doing everything right. You're amazing. I am so proud of you. You are good enough. You're great. You're just great. And the difficult experiences that you've had in your past that led you to this moment now are great gifts because at a very young age, my friend, you are learning some of the most transformational shit. And so you're going to, you are going to live a miraculous life. You're brave. I'm proud of you. I can't wait to see where you go with this. Stay connected. Keep me posted. Have you read Spirit Junkie, my book, Spirit Junkie? Um, I haven't read that one yet. I'm going to send you a copy of Spirit Junkie. And I'd also like to give you my miracle membership so that you okay. can be part of our community too. Because I think spiritual community is what you really need right now. Okay. Awesome. Okay? Yeah, miracle membership. You're going to get monthly workshops and monthly meditations and tapping with the, with tapping with me every month in a community. You, you, it's yours, baby. Okay? Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for letting me go on a spiritual tangent about prayer, because I just want you to remember where your roots are in your recovery. Okay. Yeah, you you have a lot of powerful love around you, Wilson. Yeah, man. Go, Wilson. Go. I love you, sweetheart. Thank you for being on, dear Gabby. What a gem. Wow. Can you believe these people? They're amazing. These beautiful people. Beautiful people. Okay, who's next? Hi, sweetheart. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's you. How are you? It is me, my love. How you doing, baby? How you going? Oh, I'm doing good. Um, wow, the timing of this is so funny because... Um, I was having a day yesterday and I listened to your podcast um, and I compared your voice to like a mother calming me down from, you know, the problems that happened that day. Um, and you actually mentioned something that I didn't know about you before. You said 
Um, your whole life you went with an undiagnosed anxiety disorder resulting from childhood trauma and PTSD. Um, same exact for me. Um, I actually, I've been trying to work on myself my whole life, like pretty much since I was 14, but without any direction. Um, and then within the past two years, I finally found out like, hey, you had a narcissistic parent, um, you have residual anxiety, you have complex PTSD. And so this has all really helped me to kind of focus my therapy and, and my work on myself. Um, and speaking of forgiveness today, I've actually been able to forgive my mom, um, mm. which was the narcissistic parent at the time. And so that was a huge first step. But um, my main concern is that I still have so much anger. Um, and, you know, one of the things I'm dealing with right now is like my dad's role in how I became the way I am today. And, you know, because this went undiagnosed for so long, I attracted relationships that were like um, a, a physically abusive ex, a narcissistic ex, and like both of those were really traumatizing. So, you know, people have even said to me like, oh, it seems like you hate men, which, you know, I, I don't want to be that person. <laughs> but um, I, I, I want to get rid of this anger. And it's, it's overflowing into, you know, personal interactions. It's showing up as trauma responses. Um, and I, I don't know what to do. So, okay, let's tap while we talk. Okay. So let's talk just for a minute. And I want you to tap on that, um, karate chop point. Okay. And it's the side of the hand. Just, let's just tap while we talk, if that's okay. I just, I just, you know, I, I want to acknowledge the rage. Okay. Okay, baby. And this is so important for a show on forgiveness. I'm so grateful, Lauren, for this coming up today, sweetheart. So if you're listening to the show right now, I'm practicing emotional freedom technique, which means you tap, just tapping. And right now we're just going to tap on the side of the hand, which is a, a point that you know will help us relax. And as we tap and we talk, we can start to self-regulate. Okay, sweetheart? And we, we're, we're going to just, just talk and tap on the karate chop point right now. And if you're not driving and listening, just tap while, we, while you listen because you'll borrow the benefits. So tap with me as we talk and let's just, let's just, let's just go here for a second. So this is the, the lesson, my love, as we tap this through, is that forgiveness doesn't override rage. <laughs> <laughs> because... You can't skip that step. You can't skip that step, okay? And rage is a necessary part of trauma recovery. It's a necessary part of relationship recovery. It's a necessary part of uh, just healing in general. When we deny that rage and we make it impermissible, it gets stored in our jaw, it gets stored in our gut, it gets stored in our back pain, it keeps us up at night with insomnia, it causes undiagnosed depression and, and anxiety. It that that un, yeah, you really I see the emotions coming through you right now. Checking Thanks. all the boxes. <laughs> check, 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 check. Yes. So without really that's why I feel the call to tap with you because I want to give you some relief right now, right here, right now. This is a miracles now moment. Okay, my love. So so let's just keep talking just a little bit about the fact that we can't deny the rage and rage is a part, ra moving and experiencing and expressing the rage is a part of the path towards releasing and becoming free and true forgiveness. And forgiveness of a family member, particularly in this case where there's been abuse and narcissism and, and violence potentially, I don't know exactly, it looks like that might be part of the story, ish, or just emotional violence, let's just say, right? Am I correct, Lauren? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Not physical, but yeah, the other ones. Yes, emotional emo emotional abuse. There's uh, It's a slow, slow plot process towards the practice of forgiveness. And I'm not going to ask for you to have it happen overnight, but we're going to peel back the onion. And today we're going to start with rage, okay? So would you be open to tapping with me on this rage here right now? Um, yeah, I love it. I'm becoming more present as time goes on. So <laughs> this is good. Okay. And we'll take it slow. We're not going to go heavy into this. This isn't, you know, a private session. This is public. Okay. Um, so when we tap, we tap on this karate chop point to begin with, and we identify the most pressing issue. So what is the most pressing issue? I have so much rage for my, against my father or rage towards my father. It's definitely the most recent one. Um, I think 
you know, and in general sense, there's, you know, having to self-protect as a child and the feeling that people are out to get me when, when they're not. And, you know, um, that um, mistaking an attack, um, you know, as, as it's not reality, basically. Correct. Got you. So the thing that's up for you right now, though, at like a high level is this rage towards your dad. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So could we say um, from a scale of zero to 10, where is that rage towards your dad right now? Eight or nine. An eight or a nine. Okay. So let's, let's use the most pressing issue. I've got rage towards my dad. And anyone that's listening can use this and tap along with with us. Tapping is um, tapping is really a therapeutic, beautiful practice of of using these different energy meridians and talking about the emotional disturbance today being rage, and really helping uh, activate the amygdala to let to release that fight flight response and get us back down to a grounded state. And we start by rating that most pressing issue, zero to 10. Everybody else that's listening can rate their rage towards whoever, and even if it's towards yourself, from a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the highest, you can rate it now. And if you're not driving, we can tap along. So tapping on the rage, you're gonna follow along with me and I'm gonna give you the tapping points as we talk. And what I want you to do, Lauren, is repeat after me while we tap. Okay, sweetheart? Here we go. Even though I have this rage towards my dad. Even though I have this rage towards my dad. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And everyone that's listening, I want you to tap along because you're going to borrow the benefits of your own rage from whatever it might be. So we're tapping on that karate chop point and we're at I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Say it out loud, Lauren. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this rage towards my dad. Even though I have this rage towards my dad. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And even though I've got this rage towards my dad. And even though I've got this rage towards my dad. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Tapping on the eyebrow, which is right where the hair meets the bone, right there on the side of the eyebrow. It doesn't matter what side you tap. I've got this rage. I've got this rage. Side of the eye. And it's like a eight or a nine. It's an eight or a nine. Under the eye. And it keeps me in fear. And it keeps me in fear. Under the nose. And I'm outraged. And I am outraged. Chin. How could they treat a child like this. How could they treat a child like this? Collarbone. All this rage. All this rage. Under the arm. Right where the bra line is. I am freaking outraged. I am freaking outraged. Top of the head, I'm freaking outraged. I'm freaking outraged. Eyebrow, I wanna punch something. I definitely want to punch something. Side of the eye. I want to freaking punch something. I want to freaking punch something. Under the eye. I want to effing punch something. I want to effing punch something. Under the nose. I am so outraged. I am so outraged. Chin. And I give myself permission to have that rage right now. I give myself permission to have that rage right now. Collarbone. And that rage lives in my body. That rage lives in my body. And I want to get that rage out. And I want to get that rage out. Top of the head, I'm so angry. I'm so angry. Eyebrow, I am so outraged. I am so outraged. F him. F him. Fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Fuck him. Fuck Going him. on under the nose, chin, all this rage. All of this rage. Collarbone. I want it out. I want it out. I want it out under the arm. I want it out. Top of the head. I want it out. I want it out. Eyebrow point. 
I deserve to let it out. I deserve to let it out. Side of the eye. I can be free from it. I can be free from it. Under the eye. I don't totally believe that yet. I don't totally believe that yet. Under the nose. That's fine. I just want to feel it right now. That's fine. I just want to feel it right now. Chin. I'm just going to be mad. I'm just going to be mad. Collarbone. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to be mad. Under the arm. It's fine to be outraged. It's fine to be outraged. Top of the head. I have permission to be outraged. I have permission to be outraged. Eyebrow. I give myself full permission to be outraged. I give myself full permission to be outraged. Side of the eye. Full permission. Full permission. Under the eye. This is my rage. This is my rage. Under the nose. I'm owning my rage. I'm owning my rage. Chin, I'm going to just be in my rage and that is good for me. I'm going to just be in my rage and that is good for me. Collarbone, in my rage. In my rage. It's mine. It's mine. Top of the head, I deserve it. I deserve it. Let's start that over. I deserve to feel it and express it. <laughs> I deserve to feel it and express it. Eyebrow, I deserve to fully express my rage. I deserve to fully express my rage. Side of the eye. It's so safe. It's so safe. Under the eye. It's safe for me to express my rage. It's safe for me to express my rage. Under the nose. Take a deep breath. It's safe for me to express my rage. It's safe for me to express my rage. Chin. Just relax your jaw. It's safe for me to express my rage. It's safe for me to express my rage. Collarbone. It's healthy for me to express my rage. It's healthy for me to express my rage. Under the arm. It's healthy for me to express my rage. It's healthy for me to express my rage. Top of the head. It's healthy for me to express my rage. It's healthy for me to express my rage. Eyebrow. I deserve to be able to take care of myself. I deserve to be able to take care of myself. Side of the eye. I'm showing up for myself. I'm showing up for myself. I got Gabby here. I have Gabby here. <laughs> I have a voice I can keep tuning into. I have a voice I can keep tuning into. I know uh, on the chin, I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. Collarbone. And I'm taking care of myself right now. And I'm taking care of myself right now. Under the arm. And I'm going to let myself have my rage as long as I want. I'm going to let myself have my rage as long as I want. Top of the head. I don't have to resist my rage anymore. I don't have to resist my rage anymore. Deep, deep breath. <sighs> let it go. Zero to 10. I have all this rage towards my father. Where are you now? Three? Yeah, girl! <laughs> <laughs> Look how light you are right now. We went from an eight or a nine to a three. Anybody else that's listening, rate your where you were and where you are now. I want to hear where you guys are at. Yes, what a purge, right? What a purge. I think that, Lauren, the... The message is not that we want to get rid of this rage. The message is I want you to feel it. Mm. You notice the second that we started to tap and I said, I can free myself from this rage. You were just your whole face shut down and you were like, no, I'm not fucking ready to let this go. Right. <laughs> it's like you could I want you to feel it. I want you to be in it. I want you to express it. When we've experienced a attachment breach as a child and we didn't have a secure attachment, we feel that unconsciously that it's our fault and we hold the burden of the shame that it was my fault as a child, right? We hold that storyline. And as we start to unpack that and get therapy and dear Gabby and spiritual support, we start to realize how innocent we were and how much it was not our fault. And that can make us really mad. 
-hmm. And you deserve to be mad now. You have every right to be outraged. And I mean that. I want you to feel it. I want you to work with it. I want you to befriend it. I want you to tap with it. I want you to work with it. I see that emotion in you, my sweetheart. I see this. This is a beautiful moment for you. You're giving yourself and the little girl full permission to be outraged. Rage is not something we have to push down. It's something we have to set free. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't realize. Um, yeah, I guess it's a valid emotion, right? <laughs> It um, is, it is. We might even be taught by society that, you know. We are so taught that <laughs> you'll get over it. You're fine. You know, ignore, you're, you're an adult now. What's the problem? No, 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 no. Your child parts are with you every freaking minute of the day. And mm -hmm. so you got to give your child parts permission to be outraged, hold them in that rage as in your adult parts are outraged, you know, letting that what often what happens is we protect ourselves from feeling that rage because it's such an impermissible feeling. But as soon as you start to let it out, and as soon as you start to give it voice, and as soon as you start to let it free, you free that little girl from the bondage of that storyline. You free her from the suppression of the wound and so in safe places in your therapy in your you know in your close friendships in your journal i want you to rage on the page there's a lesson that i've often shared here on dear gabby which is a practice of writing for 20 minutes in your journal rage 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 on the page my friend nicole talks about this um, as journal speak and i renamed it for myself rage on the page where you open up a journal. I listen to binaural music, so it really stimulates both sides of the brain for a fuller uh, experience of the full-bodied emotions and uh, a greater reprocessing of the emotions. Listening to that binaural music, I have it in my Spotify, we'll put it in the show notes, and you'd rage on the page, rage on the page for 20 minutes, get it all out, and then meditate with that music for another 20 minutes. Now, Lauren, if you can only do 10 and 10, fine, whatever you gotta do. But we have to get the subconscious rage out onto the page and free from the body, free from the gut, free from the back, free from the, from the insomnia, free from the, all the other physical ways that it manifests onto the page and release it. And I want you to make this a daily practice. Yeah, I have a rage on the page playlist on my Spotify that you can just listen to at any time. I'll put it in the show notes. And we did a lot today, Lauren. We did a lot today. I'll put some more information about tapping in the show notes. We'll just, we'll hook everybody up. Um, this was really big stuff, my love. You're doing great. You're just doing great. You're really great, my love. So much recovery that's behind you and so much more in front of you. And you're just, you're just doing great. Bravo. Thank you. Good, good work, good work, good work. Thank you. I want to wrap this up as it relates to forgiveness, Lauren, that we can't skip the step of rage. We can't just throw pink paint over the problem, as Marianne Williamson would say. We have to truly give ourselves the full body permission to experience our experience of someone before we can fully release them, okay? So we don't want to override our rage in the practice of forgiveness. Okay. Big stuff, big stuff, big stuff, big stuff. Go, girl. Lauren. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> God bless. I'm going to also send you a copy of Judgment Detox as well. I think that book will be your, because you're really committed, and that's a book for committed people. That is a book for people who really want to feel free. I adore you. Go, girl. Proud of you. Thank Keep you. it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it flowing. Thank you, my love. Beautiful. Wow. Okay. So Lauren brought up some stuff about trauma and PTSD. And so if anyone hasn't listened to the episode on stopping the stigma and shifting the shame around PTSD and trauma and sexual abuse, I want to just to suggest that that's another resource for a listener now to go back to that episode and listen to that episode because there's more support there. If you haven't heard it or if you need to listen to it again, go back, go back, go back. Use these, use these Dear Gabby's as resources. Okay. All right. Let's take the next person. Hi. Hi, Joanna. Hi. Hello. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. So 
it's so like fitting that we're talking about so much forgiveness um, because I'm having the biggest, the hardest time forgiving myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I did have a really traumatic childhood, um, sexual abuse, and I have, I have PTSD and I'm at a point where, you know, I've, I've dabbled, I've had some drug abuse that I've come out of abusive, uh, emotional relationship that I'm coming out of. And I'm also going, I'm doing trauma therapy. So I feel like I'm, I'm in this great place where I have, I finally do have these supports, but the problem I'm having is forgiving myself for, you know, the, the, the drug use. And I feel like I've kind of ruined my career because of that. And I'm taking time off work to deal with my PTSD. And I just feel so kind of lost. And I think a lot of it is right now. I'm just so mad at myself. I looked at my bank account and go, wow, you've, you've spent so much money on probably, I guess, trying to escape the, the pain that I've had. Um, uh, I spent a lot of money on, on cocaine and um, just, just escaping. And I'm finally out of that, but now I'm looking at sort of the damage that I've done. And I'm just, I, I don't know where to go now. I just feel so mad at myself. I got you, baby. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Joanna, I want you to put your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your belly. And I just want you to breathe as I talk to you. Okay, sweetheart, I'm going to give you a beautiful opportunity for full forgiveness of yourself right now. Okay. I'm going to explain something to you. When we have these wounded child parts, there are other parts of us according to IFS therapy, which is something I'm studying and I'm tr getting trained in at this, um, at, this vent at this time. According to IFS therapy, we have a lot of child parts that are wounded. And then there are parts of us that are also protective of those child parts. And they're protectors that can be in very extreme roles. So an example of a protector could be a rager, right? Or a controller. And these, these parts of us show up to keep these little parts, these young parts from feeling those impermissible feelings. And what I want you to understand is the addict that has spent all the money on the cocaine and the addict who has, you know, lost, lost jobs or had to leave her career is a protector part. She has been doing the absolute best that she can to stay safe and in many ways she's done a pretty good job she's done a pretty good job she's been working hard to keep it keep you from feeling the the big feelings to to keep you out of that terror and here we are now we want to Honor her for everything that she's done to try really hard to keep you safe. Give her a lot of respect for the ways that she tried. Not judge her in any way, shape, or form. But just look at her and say, yeah, you were working hard to keep me safe. And you can say to her too right now, we can talk to her and we can say to that protector part of you, we can just talk to her and say, you were working hard to keep me safe. I recognize that but I want to get you out of that extreme role. You know, we, we don't know, we don't, we can do it in a less extreme way now. And you, you did good until now. You did good up until this point. And now we're going to make, make it a little less extreme, but you did the best you could. I want you to let her off the hook. She, she had a role. She had a, she's had a very important role. Because those, those feelings of terror are so scary. And you talked about trauma here, honey, you know. There's, and and, and mo I would probably safely say 99.9% .9 of addicts are traumatized people. I think, you know, Gabor Mate writes about this a lot. You know, we, when we are traumatized, we become addicted because we are just trying to anesthetize the terror that lives in our subconscious. And I say we because you know that's my story, right? Trauma, addiction, you know. And I, I was, I too was a cocaine addict. So, you know, I can say I'm an alcoholic, but really I was a cocaine addict. And I understand. I like, I understand more than you know. So the other thing I want you to do right now is talk to that part of you, that protector part, and just say, oh yeah, I'm not alone. Like Gabby was a cocaine addict too, right? <laughs> like you know, she's obviously, you know, I have so much respect for the, for, for the, the addict part of me. 
She worked real hard. She did the best she could. And the other thing that's so beautiful is that the adult resourced higher self, the, 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 the God within you, and in IFS we call it self, right? Who is with me right now, this adult resourced part of you that's with me right now, has had enough strength to bring you out of that extreme role. So, you know, I want you to look at the bank account and be like, yeah, my, my protector was working hard. That's her work. She did a good job. That's where we were at. You know, look at the cocaine abuse. Okay, my protector was doing her job. That was the best she could do at that time, you know? And now it's not about denying her or shaming her. It's about just getting her out of that extreme role so that she can still, you know, she could still be with me. You know, she's going to be there, but that I'm going to, you know, I can channel that addictive energy into good stuff, you know, and, and, and that not addictive energy, but that strength, you know, and that conviction and the fieriness, you know, it's not like we have to lose our edge. We just soften our edges. So it's, I really want you to have a lot of love and respect for the addict. Okay. We just want to get, we want to, we just want to get, you know, she's just, thank you so much for doing the work that you've done. And I want you, and I forgive you, and I'm, and I'm, and, and I'm grateful that we did the things we needed to do to, to survive at that moment. And now I'm ready to get out of that extreme role. Let's get, you know, let's get you out of that extreme role. Let's listen to Dear Gabby. Let's get the therapy. Yes. Let's take our time off of the work. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's rebuild together now. Yes. But Joanna, can you feel that love for her right now? Can you feel that respect for her right now? Yeah. I think you can. I see it in you. Yeah. Yeah. Believing that things can be good is something that's not very easy for traumatized people. And it takes uh, daily devotion to your happiness and your well-being. And I promise you that with each step of the practices, the therapy, the meditation, the, the spiritual practice, the books, I'm going to invite you to join our miracle membership so you have more support from me. Okay. I want you to be yeah. part of our miracle membership. You can use, there's, you know, there's five years of workshops that are all in the archives. There's hundreds of meditations. There's, there's workshops specifically on addiction. There's workshops. I'm going to have Dick Schwartz, the founder of IFS therapy featured in there. So you can use more of this, this parts work that we just did a little bit of it together, just working on loving the, all of your parts. And we're going to get you all of that to hook you up. And I really want you to recognize that you aren't supposed to be at work right now. Your full-time job right now is your well-being. And that means that you cut your costs. That means that you get support from the government. Whatever that means, my love, you take that support and you just cut your costs down and you focus on you. And the focus okay. is on you, on you, on you. And, yeah. you know, I want to bring you back to, you said something also about, you know, I, it's hard to forgive my past mistakes. I want you to keep reminding yourself that the part of you that made those mistakes, and I'm putting mistakes in air quotes right now because they're not mistakes, was a protector part of you that was doing her best to keep you safe and to keep you from feeling impermissible terror. So she didn't make any mistakes. She was working hard. She was working hard in a way that was has become unmanageable. And so we're going to yeah. help her work in a different way now, okay? I love her. I love that part of her, of you, Joanna. I love that. I love addict Joanna. She did a good job. She got you here, okay? And what I want you to do today, Joanna, I think you said that you listened to this podcast already, but I want you to go back and re-listen to the Stop the Stigma, Shift the Shame podcast, okay? The conversation about spirituality and trauma and, and, and sexual abuse and addiction and it's all in there and I want you to listen to it again today because I want you to literally listen and just be like, yep, I'm not alone. I am not alone. I am not alone. I am not alone. That was the theme of that show. I want you to go back and listen to it, my love, okay? You're a rock star, baby. You're absolutely amazing. Beautiful work. I love you, Joanna, and I love your addict part too. I love her. I'm proud of her. She did what she had to do, okay? Good job, baby. Go, girl. <laughs> really good work. Okay, thank you, Joanna. Wow, what a show today. Hello, Summer. Hi, Gabby. Oh, my gosh. I'm sitting here, like, getting ready to take my dog for a walk. Was not expecting this at all. 
but just sitting and listening, enjoying all the beautiful stories. Um, wow, okay, let me, I really was not expecting this. Let me get my thoughts together. Um, you know, listening to these beautiful stories, I was sitting here thinking about all the things that I wanted to talk about if I had been picked and all these things that were going on in my life. And, you know, Lauren and Joanna's stories really resonated with me as far as self-care goes. And, you know, I was like, I shouldn't be picked. You know, there's so many people that have so many bigger problems going on in their lives. You know, they deserve to be on the show more than me. And it kind of just brought up the feeling of this, you know, thought system that I've had my entire life of someone always has it worse. Someone always has it worse. And it's like, well, why don't I deserve to be on here? You know, why I'm having trouble claiming that self-care and that self-love for myself because I just have so much love for all these people that have it so much worse than me in my own head that I just am having trouble claiming that self-care and that self-love. Wow. Big stuff, Summer. You know, I was just kind of undoing that, yeah. you know, process that I've learned over all these years of being the caretaker for someone else yep. and never really yep. taking care of myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is a really important message. We, we hear a lot of big stuff here on this show, big stories, big traumas, big, big trauma with a big T, but there's also trauma with a small T. We all are suffering in our own ways. We all are in our own ways traumatized and it's not, and I, and I, and I'm just like being jovial about it because it's just the human condition. It's, it's really hard to be human, even with the best, most amazing attachment and the most amazing family. And yeah, you know, there's a percentage of people that, that get through life with a, with a really strong values and a family attachment bonds as children and they can, you know, be fine and thrive. But it doesn't mean that they're, uh, they're just completely um, immune to discomfort. And, and suffering. So there is a part of you, Summer, that believes that I'm not good enough unless I'm taking care of everybody else. And who am I to show up for myself because everybody else has it worse than me and, and, and so on and so on. So there's a part of you maybe at this moment that's listening that you used your own words. I have to forgive myself for not sharing, not showing up for myself. And the interesting thing that happens, Summer, is we start to get healthier and healthier. Listen to a show like this and practice spiritual principles and do therapy or whatever it is. We start to see the ways that we may have treated ourselves. Like, And in your case, you're looking back and you're saying, wow, I've been putting everybody else before myself. And there's a part of you that's mad about that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Good. Good. I want you just notice that part of you that has been people pleasing. And I want you to thank her. I want to say thank you for your service. You've been, you've had a role. You've been trying to protect me from something. I don't know what that is in this moment, but you know what it is. You've had a role and I'm not going to judge you because we want to forgive her, right? We want to forgive her for overriding your self-care. She's been, she's been, yeah. she's been doing her job, but I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best to, uh, let you step aside. I'm going to do my best right now in this moment to accept that I do deserve to be here on Dear Gabby. Oh, well, then you invited them in and here they are. So Summer, even if you don't believe that you can care for yourself yet, I want you to believe that your guides can. So when you notice that you're overriding yourself, or you're over people pleasing, or you're doing, doing for others and not for yourself. I want that to be a cue for you to ask your guides to help you. It's very safe to welcome that support. They are, their only job is to surround you with love. Their only job is to guide you towards love. Their only mission is to serve you 
they they're like this they're clapping right now they're like yes and they're saying oh we intervened i'm just seeing like a swoosh in okay and they're saying we're coming through to let you know we're here and we want you to ask for help use us talk to us they're saying in you invoked us in the meditation this morning is what they're saying you invoked us in we are here we're here to remind you you deserve this love and we are an ever-present faucet of love that will never stop flowing wow that's beautiful it will never stop flowing i just see like this running water running water running water okay so you though love have to turn on the faucet you got me so they can't it, the water is ready to flow but they are saying you need to turn it on they can't force it on. Do you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have to turn that faucet on and let that love flow. They're saying that you're going to start to feel them in your meditation. Is that something that you've ever experienced? Like almost like a presence of love come over you? Is that a, something you've experienced before? Yes, it was definitely something I had to build up to when you first release these meditations. I didn't really understand what was going on. Um, but this morning, I just got a really strong message. I can even read it to you. I wrote it down. It said, so many others are struggling with the same exact anxiety, addiction, and lack of self-care that you have, but you need to be the beacon of light for them in the darkness. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to add to that. The way that you become that beacon of light for them in the darkness is by accepting that light for yourself first. There you go, my love. There you go, my love. There you go. So your guides are saying, turn on the faucet turn on the faucet. And I want you to use that visual like, okay, I've got this, this like stream of love that's available to me at all times. And mm -hmm. I can just, all I have to do is just turn it on. So I want you to, when you sit down to your meditation, I literally, they want you to literally visualize like you're turning on the faucet, hit palms up, back straight, receive, listen, use that spirit guides meditation. That's the portal they're saying to get through to you. So use that, keep writing, stream of conscious writing. They're going to keep writing through you. Right, right, right. They're showing me right, 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 right. They're going to write through and you're going to physically feel them. You're going to feel like a blanket around you. You're going to feel a strength around you. And they're saying that you need to talk to them all day long. Like, talk, like you're going to be like a, you know, mm -hmm. seem like a wild woman talking to yourself, but that's cool. We like that here. Okay. So you're talking to your guides and you're going to say, thank you guides for helping me uh, get on this phone call with my mom who I don't want to talk to her. Thank you guides for helping me not override myself right now. Thank you guides for helping me feel good enough in this moment. Thank you guides for helping me. Thank you guides for helping me see that I deserve love. So just talk, 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 talk to them. Turn the faucet on, 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 on. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. They are just ready to wrap around you did you see that my arms just went like that okay yeah. wrap around you you have you deserve to be loved cared for protected watched over and guided okay my sweet this is your spiritual home sweetheart okay good job good job baby thank you my love thank you beautiful work ah all right thank you summer thank you summer okay <laughs> I am going to close this absolutely gorgeous episode. This is a big one. Big one. Big and beautiful. Everyone watching, everyone listening, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being part of this conversation today. We all deserve to be free from the bondage of self-attack, self-judgment. We deserve to be free from the impermissible feelings of rage and terror. We deserve to feel supported and guided and fully loved. Forgiveness of ourselves and forgiveness of others is a direct path to that freedom the practices shared on this show today are beautifully designed to remind you that anything you've done to this point in time is exactly as it's meant to be. Accept it completely and fully. And in many ways, thank it. Thank that part of you that got you here. And they thank, thank even, even the most difficult relationships that caused you harm have revealed to you the greatness of who you are and revealed to you every single day the opportunity for greater strength and growth. And when we see through that lens of love, we can see the experiences in our life for the first time. We can see them as moments of growth. We can see them as 
opportunities for strength. We can see them through the lens of forgiveness. And I want you all to know as I talk to you that you've done a really good job. You've done a really good job. If you're listening to this show, it means that you are deeply committed to your personal growth. If you made it to the end of this show, it means that you are deeply devoted to your own inner growth and spiritual awakening and freedom from the past. And if you listen to the end of this show, it means you are willing to forgive yourself. Bravo. Nice job. Keep it up. Thank you for joining me here on Dear Gabby. I love you guys. If you like this video and you want to get more Gabby, check out the next one right over here.